Hello and welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this getting to know WebCore video, we will be taking a deeper look at variables by going over what exactly a variable is, looking at the different types of variables and when to use them, as well as go over a couple example pistons using different types of variables. If this is your first time stumbling on one of my videos in this series, or if you haven't taken a look at the series in a while, make sure to check out some of my other Getting to Know WebCore videos. I'll include a link in the description below for the entire series, and make sure to check back as I have plenty more videos planned for it. In WebCore, a variable is a type of container for data that can be referenced or modified at a later time either within a piston, between pistons, or even between WebCore instances within a single location. A few use cases for variables are tracking a device state for future use, storing multiple devices in an array, and communicating or tracking the state of devices or events between pistons. There are two aspects to a variable that are important to know about, and that is its data type and scope. A data type is simply a way for WebCore to know what type of data to expect and for how to handle that data. This is the same thing as a variable type in several programming languages such as Python. There are actually nine different data types that can be assigned to a variable within WebCore. The first type is string. String variables can contain any text or numbers in a structure similar to a sentence. Strings are represented by quotation marks. An example of a string could be the cat jumps over the moon. While a string can technically store just a number, it is not recommended as you may not get the results you are looking for attempting to evaluate multiple string variables. Instead, you should use one of the two available number types. The first number type is integer. Integer variables are able to store whole numbers, for example the number 1 or the number 9001. If you attempt to store a number with a decimal in it, the decimal and any numbers following it are dropped. Instead, you should use the other type of number variable, which is decimal. Just like the name sounds, you are able to store decimal numbers such as 1.2 or 100.1234. The fourth variable type is boolean. A boolean can either be set to true or false. The next variable data type is date and time. This variable can hold a single point in time that contains both the date and time, such as what is on the screen right now. The sixth variable data type is date. This is similar to the date and time variable, except this will only hold the date, such as what is on the screen right now. The seventh variable type, if you didn't guess it already, is time. This variable type can hold a single point in time, but only the time of that point. The eighth variable data type is device. These variables can store device handlers such as a button. What's nice about this data type is that you can store multiple devices within the variable similar to an array. This variable type is great for if you want to interact with multiple devices without having to have multiple lines of code for each one. The last variable type is dynamic. These are also sometimes referred to as loose typed variables. These variables can store any kind of data such as numbers, strings, or boolean values. While you can technically store data in dynamic variables that fall under the other data types we covered, you should always use the specific data type for that variable to receive the best performance and have consistent expected results. For example, while you could store the number 100 in a dynamic variable, you really should use the number integer or the number decimal data type. The variable data type is defined when creating a variable, which we will be going over shortly. The second piece of a variable is the scope. The scope of a variable indicates where and how that variable can be interacted with. In WebCore, there are three variable scopes that you can create a variable under. The first is local. Local variables are contained to the individual piston that they are created in and can only be interacted with within that piston. This means that a local variable is unique to that piston, is not shared with other pistons, and multiple pistons can safely define local variables with the same name without impact. Local variables can have an initial value set which will be applied every single time the piston runs. If an initial value is not set, then the value set to the variable will carry over for future executions of that piston. So for example, in this example piston, the variable x is set with an initial value of 1. The piston executes because the button was pushed and 1 is added to the variable. If the piston runs again, the outcome will be the same with the variable ending with the number 2. This is because every time the piston runs, we are setting the integer to 1. If we do not set an initial value, like in this example piston, every time the button is pushed, the variable increments by 1. So why might you want to or not want to set the initial value of a variable? If you are looking to track the state of something such as the number of times a button is pushed between executions of a piston, then you would not want to set an initial value. Whereas if you only care about the state of something within that execution of that piston, would you set the initial state of a variable? One example of this might be to know the time an event occurs that will later be used in your piston to cause some other action to occur. To create a local variable, you must first define it within the piston. To do this, enable the Show Variables option in the Piston Editor. Once enabled, the Define block will appear. From here, click on Add a New Variable. Select the type, 
give it a name, and then assign the initial value if you are planning on doing that. The second variable scope is global. Global variables are shared among all pistons and can be interacted with by all pistons within your web core instance. A global variable will always start with an at symbol. Any changes made to a global variable by any piston will be available for the next run of all other pistons within the same web core instance. When a piston runs, a snapshot is taken of the global variables to ensure that they do not change unexpectedly while the piston is executing. To create a global variable, click on Add a New Global Variable in the top right hand corner of the piston editor. On the screen that opens up, select the variable data type, give it a name, and set the initial value if you want to do so. Do take note that with global variables, the initialized value is only used for the first time. Any changes to it made within a piston are saved. The third variable scope is super global. This type of variable allows for variables to be used among multiple web core instances within the same location. These variables have a double at symbol in the front of their names. These are created the same way as global variables, you just have to put an extra at sign in front of the name. I will not be covering this variable scope past this point as I do not run multiple instances of WebCore. Just note that everything covered moving forward for global variables will apply to super global variables, just that instead of being between pistons in one WebCore instance, it can be interacted with from pistons in other WebCore instances. Which variable scope to use really just comes down to how you plan to use the variable. If the variable will only be used within a single piston, then picking local scope makes sense. For example, if you just want to track the status of a door being open and all actions around that door state are contained to a single piston, then local variables make sense. If, however, you have a variable that will be interacted with by multiple pistons, then a global variable is what you should pick. For example, I use global variables for my smart laundry room piston that helps keep track of when laundry is done being washed and dried, and variable data used within that piston is also used by my notification piston to send out updates if wet laundry is left in the washer for too long. If you'd like to learn more about the devices I use to set up my smart laundry room or the piston I set up to keep track of everything, make sure to check out my video in this series covering it. You'll be able to find a link for it in the description below as well as in the information box above. Do keep in mind that you should always use local variables whenever possible for maximum performance and stability. There is also another type of variables which are system variables. System variables are local read-only variables that provide information about the environment and will always start with a dollar sign. These variables include different aspects, such as the date, the time, next sunrise, and many other things. A piston can use multiple variables, including variables with different data types and scopes. Let's now take a look at a few example pistons. Let's walk through creating a piston where the current timestamp is saved when a button is pushed with a local variable. To get started, create a new piston and give it a name. If you do not have a defined block at the top of the piston, click on the far left symbol. If you hover over it, show variables will be shown. With the define block visible, click on add a new variable. Click on the drop down menu and select the variable type. For this piston, we will be picking time, time only. For name, I will be naming a timestamp. If you want to set an initial value, select the second drop down and select value. The format will be set for the value based on the variable data type. The only data type that doesn't have a value field is device. As a reminder, setting an initial value for local variables will have the value initiated each time the piston runs, meaning any data saved to it will not be kept between piston executions. For this example, we will not set an initial value by having the option set to nothing selected. Once all set, you can click on add more to keep making variables or click add to be brought back to the piston editor. Next will be to create an if block that will set the value of our variable to the time a button is pushed. To do this, click on add a new statement under execute. On the window that opens up, click on add an if. And then we will click on add a condition. For this piston, I will select a button for the device and button for what to compare. For this device, I will leave any for which buttons and gets pushed will be left the same. Clicking on add will bring us back to the piston editor. Next will be to add the action for this if block. To add an action, click on add a new statement under then, and then click on add an action on the new window that opens. To interact with variables, we leave location selected here and click on add a task. 
From the next screen, click on the dropdown and search for set variable. From here, we will select our local variable called timestamp. And for the next section, we are going to utilize a system variable. To do this, click on drop down under value and select variable. Then select the drop down next to it and search for now. Once selected, we can click on add. With our piston created, let's save the piston and test it out. Great, so pushing the button causes the timestamp variable to update with the time the button is pushed. We can see this in both the piston itself for the defined variable, as well as in the variable section for the piston. Let's now make a more advanced piston, but this time with a global variable. In this piston example, we will create a global integer variable that will store the number of times the button is pushed. We will then have a second piston that changes the color of a light bulb when a contact sensor opens or closes and the color decided will be based on if the number in the global variable is even or odd. Obviously, you could easily do this in one piston, but to show global variables working between pistons, I broke it up into two. First, we will create our button counter piston. In the piston editor, we will create a global variable by clicking on add a new global variable in the top right hand corner. Next, change the variable type to integer and we'll name it push count. You can assign an initial value to the variable here if you want. With global variables, this will not get set every time a piston runs. Instead, it is simply the starting state of the variable. This can be necessary to trigger a piston or event for the first time with the variable. Otherwise, like in our case for this example piston, we can leave it blank. Clicking on add will bring us back to the piston editor. You will notice the global variable created is now in the top right hand corner and the current value for it is displayed. Next, click on Add a New Statement under Execute, and select Add an If on the window that opens. Next, click on Add a Condition, and we will again select a button for this piston. For what to compare, we will select Button, and we will again leave Any, and Gets Pushed alone. Clicking on Add brings us back to the Piston Editor. Next, click on Add a New Statement under Then. On the window that opens up, click on Add an Action, and with Leaving Location selected, click on Add a Task. After, click on the drop-down menu under Do and search for Set Variable. Next, select the variable we recently created, and then click on the drop-down menu under Value. Because we are actually going to manipulate the value, the variable is already holding Select Expression. In the box that opens, type in the variable name and then type in plus one. This expression when triggered will take whatever value is stored in the variable and add one to it. The expression will actually be evaluated and the results can be seen here. If we were to change it to plus five, the value would change. If you make a mistake in your expression, the editor will let you know and make suggestions on how to fix the issue if possible. Once your expression is all set, click on Add. With our first piston done, let's save it and create the second piston. The second piston will be to change the color of a light whenever a contact sensor opens or closes, and the color will change based on if the number in our global variable is even or odd. Click on Add a New Statement under Execute, and on the new window that opens up, click on Add an If. Next, click on Add a Condition. And then for this piston, I'm going to select the Contact Sensor. For the comparison, I will pick the Trigger Changes. This is because I want the piston to be executed whenever the Contact Sensor opens or closes. Clicking on Add will bring us back to the Piston Editor. We are now going to nest two separate if statements within the if block we just created. If you are not familiar with nested if statements, don't worry. I will first create them and then go over how nested if statements work. The two if blocks we are going to create are if the global variable is even to then set the light to green, and the second will be if the global variable is odd to set the light to purple. To do this, click on add a new statement under then, and then click on add an if. Next click on add a condition. I then will be selecting the variable we created recently. 
For comparison, I will select is even and then click on add. Next click on add a new statement under then, but make sure it is part of the if block we just created. On the window that opens up, click on add an action. And then I will be selecting my RGB light bulb. Next click on add a task, and then on the drop down search for set color. This will present additional options to set your color. For me, I will be picking green. Once all set, click on add. Next will be to add the second nested if block. This one will be under the if block we just created and nested in the original if block. If you're having trouble telling which if block is what, you can click on the main if block to have the lines highlighted showing you everything that is a part of it. Similarly, you can click on the first nested if block we just created to have it highlighted. After clicking on add a new statement, click on add an if. Next click on add a condition. Select our global variable again. And this time set the comparison condition to is odd. Clicking on add will bring us back to the piston editor. From here, click on add a new statement under the then section in the if block we just created. On the new window that pops up, click on add an action and then select the light bulb. Next click on add a task. Select set color and then I'll be selecting purple for this task. Clicking on add will bring us back to the piston editor. We can now save our piston. Before testing out this piston, let's take a look at our nested if block. Essentially, a nested if block is the same as a normal if block with a trigger or condition and an event, but instead of a direct action being taken, additional if blocks are evaluated. So for this one, the trigger will be if a contact sensor changes. When this happens, the then section of the if block is evaluated from top down until the end. With that, the first if block is evaluated, and it has a condition of if our global variable is even. At this point, the if block will be treated like a normal if block, so if the if statement is correct, the then will be executed. Afterwards, the next if block will be evaluated, which for this piston is if the global variable is odd. If this condition is true, the then statement will be executed. For a nested if block, you can have multiple if statements like this in a row, and each one will be evaluated until the end, or if one of the if statements ends the piston. Just remember, they will always be evaluated from top down. Let's now test out our piston by pushing the button. As can be seen on the first piston, the global variable counter increments. Let's set it to an even number and then open the contact sensor. Great, with the global variable set to an even number, the light changes to green when the contact sensor changes state. If we open and close the contact sensor a few times, the light stays the same color because the variable we are using hasn't changed. Let's now push the button a few times to make it an odd number and open the contact sensor again. Awesome, doing so changes the light to purple. Opening and closing the contact sensor will not do anything with the light because the button has not been pushed again. Global variables are a great way to add additional complexity to your piston and can be used to have multiple pistons interact with each other. A few other use cases for variables are, if you want to capture the volume of a device so you can set it back later on, or to capture the state of a device such as a color light bulb so you can change it back to the color after an event. I would love to know what you're using variables to accomplish in WebCore, so feel free to let me know in the comments below. And don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. And if you aren't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to be one of the first to know when I release a new video.
Thank you for watching.